to you to another main event. I'm curious, what are your feelings ahead of this one? You know, you've had a few of these rattled off now, but ahead of this one, does it feel any different or does it feel the same old, same old? Um, you know, it's just another day at the office, another fight, a different man in front of me, and, you know, I'm ready to go. And I put a lot of time in this preparation, and Saturday will come, and I'm ready to fuck shit up. It's funny to think about Corey, about his movement, because you just fought Dominic Cruz, the guy who everyone says has the sort of wackiest movement in the division. When you look at Corey, do you think his movement in and out and his combinations are something you have to worry about, or do you think he's actually more of a sort of an orthodox fighter than Cruz was? Just the fact that it's a guy that is preparing himself to beat me up, I gotta worry. I gotta be worried about it. And you know, I wake up every morning thinking, you know, there's there's a lot of job to to get done. So it doesn't really matter who's in front of me. I focus on just get better, and I've been showing that fight to fight. Yeah. What are the stakes for this fight, right? Because obviously Henry Cejudo's jumped in. We'll talk about him in a second. Sean O'Malley's kind of around there, but you're putting on this crazy streak yourself. A win over Corey is a big deal. Do you think with this one you can jump over everyone else, or what does a win do for you here? Well, you know, the way that the rankings are done, it's really hard to predict things. You know, you got O'Malley, number one, after he beat Jan. Now you got Merab, number one, after beat Jan. So Jan wasn't number one in his last fight, and you beat the guy and you go to number one. So it really doesn't fucking matter. You can be number 10 and fight for the title. It's, it's, it's whatever the fuck the UFC want to do at this point, so... I'm okay with that because I'm I'm putting in work. I'm winning the way they want wins. So you know, and then the fans are cheering for me. There's a reason this is in front in an arena. There's a reason I'm fighting three main events in a row. So I'm just keep making money, and you know, eventually the bell will come to me because you know, the harder you chase things, they might go away from you. I just I'm just going with the flow. I know I'm working hard, so I'm not I'm not worried about anything. What do you feel about Henry Cejudo jumping back from retirement, going straight into a title shot? He's broke. You think so? You know, what's the point to come back when you retire on top? You know, you come back because, you know, either you need attention and you miss that thing or you need money. You don't think Henry maybe missed a bit of attention? He could be. Yeah, he's a little guy. They need attention. Do you, do you have any sort of feeling towards the UFC at all for booking him in a title shot right away? Uh, no, at all. You know, good for him. If the UFC do that to me, I'll be fucking stoked about it. I'll be like, fuck yeah, fuck the line. So when they do things for you, it feels good, right? So if they do that for him, good for him. How do you see that fight playing out? Um, if you see it from the outside, Cejudo definitely got better striking. He got a better base, moved well in the feet. And both have wrestling pedigree, right? Both are great wrestlers. Um, if Sehuda can understand the stand-up and piss him up, you can see him losing the way he lost in the past, like Brian Caraway or guys like Asun Saro that they just, you know, stop the tech and let him know, I'm here to fight. Sehuda can definitely do that. But also he's been, long, he's been away for a long time. Who knows how he come back? Is he healthy? He's going to make the way properly. So there's a lot of things that matters. He's already talking about moving up. That's already probably building an excuse in the back of his head. Things are going his way. Ah, oh, the worker is too hard, whatever. Who knows? I don't give a fuck, really. <laughs> I saw a quote from you earlier today that you're not even planning an after party, right? All your focus is on this fight and this man in front of you? I have zero plans before I fight on Saturday night. There's no, there's, there's no a meal I'm thinking about it. There's no a drink I'm thinking about it. There's nothing I want to get after the fight. My life it's pretty much stop until the moment before the fight. Then go in there, basically fighting for my life, for my future, for my family, and then we'll figure it out later. Is that always the way you approach a fight, or is this one special? Yeah, I feel like when people start looking past things and they start looking like, this is what I want after, this is what I want to fight, fuck, you can predict fighting, you know what I'm saying? Like Even if, even if you get to the Mystic Mag level and you predict maybe three times, you can predict the forever so fighting is gnarly so i fucking take it seriously because you can get too ahead of the fight because you gotta fucking fight it's not a game chito everyone in your position is usually thinking ahead and always trying to make a case for being the next guy at the belt you choose a different route um why is that is it just that just not to spend any energy is, is it because the sport is unpredictable why do you choose to have a different approach to the fight game than, than other contenders? 
I just feel is the is, is the way I am, you know. I feel like why put so much energy on things that are not in front of you? Like I think ahead. I I do stuff to to sol to solidify my future, to get things right. But like in terms of fighting, I mean you can talk about three or four guys when you have a different guy in front of you. It's just you know, you put all this energy um, that you wanna kick everybody's ass, but then the guy in front of you just fucking wipe you out and then then what? Then you're not fighting anybody anyways. So might as well put all your energy there and fuck it, roll the dice. See what happens. Yeah, for sure. And uh Marab recently fought and a lot of people after the fight were going crazy over his cardio, saying he's got the best cardio, you know, in the division. You obviously I think have a claim to that. We've rarely seen you tired, you know, you go five rounds, no problem. Um do you feel like you you have a sort of na uh, a stake in that claim? Not at all. Uh, that that's the that, that's the best example of a of a guy like me. Everybody's giving him props of you got the best card, the best pressure. Everybody's like really excited about it. And then anybody can go check my social media. I can give two fucks about that. Like I'm not trying to claim anything. I'm not trying to to get clout or like I don't I don't call attention for myself. That just comes along. Why? Fuck, I'm, I might be cool. It just, it just comes to me. The moment that you are chasing it and asking for it, it just keeps getting away from you. Yeah. And I know that you are focused on the present, but the goal, this is, might be a very simple and dumb question, but the goal is the belt, right? Like you want to be champion. That's everything. That's everything to me. And, you know, get the belt, bring it back to Ecuador and, Eventually, one day, defend my belt in Ecuador. Why not? Um, I, I'm not. I, when I think about being in the present and talk about the fight ahead of me, the reason I think like that is because I want to be a world champion. I mean, I don't want to get off the route. Doesn't matter where I am. Doesn't matter who I become. Doesn't matter how much money I make. I want to be a world champion. That's the goal. When I start, I want to raise money for my daughter. I want to make things happen for her. That's done. That's a personal goal. That's a that's a belt I get myself for me, my wife, my family. Now it's coming the the actual goals, which now I can look forward to those things and I just accomplish them. I, if I put something on my mind, only dying will not make me rich. But besides that, I'm on it. Yeah. And uh something is happening really beautiful in the Hispanic uh, scene we see we saw Brandon Moreno become undisputed champion we saw Jair Rodriguez become uh, interim champion those are guys that you were with in the developmental deal back in Jackson's back when you guys were just kids um, what was that like seeing you know these guys that you've known for years you know come from nothing before they weren't even in, in the UFC and now they're champions it's a it's a huge motivation I think Brandon got the bell right before my David grand fight and for the first time, and I was, you know, it just make me happy to see, like, it's reachable. Guys, like, I know, get there. Now, Yair, that I'm actually, I know him a little more. I, I was a little closer to him. Get the interim belt, too, which a belt is a belt. He's a champion right now, you know. To me, those things are, see people succeeding makes me want to even succeed more. Maybe want to take it more seriously, keep getting better, because it's, it's right there. Like, you are right there. Might as well keep going. Yeah. I know you're not Mexican. You're from Ecuador. But would you like to be in this calendar year, 2023, be part of that wave of Hispanic MMA? Oh, you know, 100%. Like challenge for the belt this year? 100%. That, it's, uh, it's still Latin American. It's still like a Spanish-speaking country. So I want to I wanna, I wanna become a world champion and join them in that list because that's making history for – that will be forever in the in the history books. Whoever gets that bill. Yeah, for sure. uh, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Cheetah over here. Um, talking to MiddleEasy.com, Sanhagen mm -hmm. believes the only advantage uh, you have over him is your power. Uh, while you're looking to prove that you're better than him everywhere, what is one advantage, one advantage that you would give to him? I don't, I don't really see it like that. You know, if he starts looking like I got more power, but he's better everywhere. That's just an opinion, right? To me, I just, I just want to win the fight, period. I don't, 
I don't get too, you know, analytic with shit like this is a fight. You know, it doesn't matter. You can have a list of things, but when you get in there, you got to fight. So that's what I'm ready for. Are you a bit disappointed that you're fighting in Texas, given that, you know, they're kind of strict when it comes to THC and all of that stuff? I'm a professional. They told me, stop smoking, I stop smoking. Uh, that's probably the best thing I can tell to people. This is, you can call it a drug, but it's, I'm not a fucking addict. I stopped smoking a month away, and I smoke good shit, so that means we're good. After the fight, we go back to it. Awesome. And uh, what are some of, your, uh, some of your biggest goals for 2023? Fight for the bell. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hola, Chito. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Saluda Andrés Ponce, también con sangre, sangre de chone. ¿eh? Mucho gusto. ¿Cómo está, Chito? Te quiero preguntar, eh, ¿cómo te imaginas la pelea del día sábado? En cuanto a los estilos, las características que tienen cada uno de ustedes, ¿crees que va a ser de estudio o, o intensa desde el inicio? Es difícil saber todas esas cosas, ¿no? Yo por eso planteo muchos escenarios en mi cabeza, veo lo mejor, veo lo peor y simplemente me preparo para, para lo que sea. ¿Has tenido una preparación distinta, especial para esta pelea? Igual que siempre. Muy, mucha disciplina, muchas horas de trabajo, mucha repetición y no tirar la toalla. ¿Te gusta que te cataloguen como un striker? O sea, que, que, que te vean así. Realmente no, no, me da igual cómo lo vean. ¿no? Lo único que, que me gusta, que, que la gente sepa, es que con trabajo fuerte todo se logra. Y por último, Chito, justamente para la gente, eh, ¿qué sientes desde lo emotivo? Que, que cada pelea tuya en Ecuador sea vista por todo mundo, que casi que sea un partido de, de Ecuador en el Mundial, que la gente realmente te, te mande tanta buena vibra, buenos mensajes y que este sábado van a estar pendientes de ti. No sé si les quieras mandar un mensajito. Es algo increíble para mí. Yo realmente el apoyo lo siento, la, la apreciación del público es algo que, que me motiva a seguir adelante, que me, que me motiva a, a, a hacerle saber a la gente que con trabajo se puede, con constancia se puede y que y que el sí se puede es un hecho, si tú pones todo de ti en tu corazón y a la gente que me apoya, pues el amor es también de vuelta para ellos porque lo aprecio mucho. Marlon, you guys, uh, you were set to fight in Vegas about four to five weeks ago. Um, obviously moved here. Did that interrupt any training or anything? Or? Um, I was ready to go. I wasn't really needing extra time. I was you know, craving to get in there and do my job. But, you know, the UFC call, they were needing a, a main event for, for this night. So we arranged a couple of things and we figured it out and we signed new papers. But um, I was ready to go. I I did ask if there's a chance we can keep it like this. Don't move it. But, you know, if you want to get cheese, you got to sometimes let a little things go. But it is what it is. Do you have thoughts on uh, headlining to in San Antonio this weekend? Uh, just uh, fighting in Texas. Thoughts in general. Say that again, please. Uh, just do you have thoughts on you know do uh, on being the main main event here in San Antonio? Uh, I know you wanted to keep it the same way, but you know since we are here in San Antonio now, do you have any kind of thoughts on that? I like it. I like the fact that we're in a big arena. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, South Americans around here, and I got my sports team ready, so we're ready to go. Just from the interaction with Andres, uh, first question was about: um, do you, do you, How do you feel? How do you feel judging by the styles that you have of fighting? Is it going to be you guys going at it right right away, or is it going to be a fight of studying? And Chito said, "I mean, you don't know these things. I mean, you got to let things thing, things play out when it comes." Um, also, about the preparation: Did you change the preparation for this fight, or was it? I mean, anything special judging again from from the, your opponent? You know. Same preparation as always, just going at it and working hard. And one of the, the, the questions at the end, how do you feel about the fact that in Ecuador, you, your fights are seen almost like a World Cup game and all Ecuadorians come together on Saturday night to watch you? How does it make you feel this? And Chito's answer is it just, it, it makes me so proud of being able to, to represent and the fact that just tell people that with hard work and dedication, you can get there as well. This is just, this is the message I have for, one, for, for everyone and is very proud to represent Ecuador. Pound for pound, translator in the fucking game right here. War for war, perfectly. Gracias, hermano. Uh, Chito, 
uh, what's more likely for you as a bonus, uh, performance of the night bonus or a five the night bonus? Any bonus is fucking welcome. So, you know, I like money, so they just can keep coming to me. What would you do with an extra 50K in the bank? Invest it, figure it out how to do something good with it. Maybe new car, new watch, but pretty much keep my family safe and keep the best for the future. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Chito, I know you don't care about uh, what your opponent thinks about skills and if he's stronger, this and that, but he did say, uh, when asked about the back tattoos, he did say yours was better. 100% is better. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yeah. yeah, I got good tattoos. I don't think he likes the back tattoo, that's weird. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's he's had a, a change in mind in, in his tattoo, but he said, yeah, I'll, I'll give him that. He's got He's got the best tattoos for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.